way that I'm going to approach the materials that the students will be using on a regular basis, I have different tubs, I can put them on a tray. Each table will just have one of each of these items on their table, depending on what we're using that day. So pencils go in these little bowls here, and I just use these little golf pencils, so that way they're easy to replace. There's a whole hundred thousand of them that I have. And that way, you know, they're always having a pencil on hand. Sometimes they don't bring pencils to class. I'm not dealing with those big pencils, and it's not getting out of hand. This is a nice way to really contain the use of the pencils. And then they put them back in here when they're done. So cleanup is a breeze. Same thing with the crayons. I use these rectangular tubs for the crayons. You know, sometimes they're uh, broken in different states of disrepair, so I just kind of refresh them over time. But that way, all the crayons are in one location. This is pencils, this is crayons, and then colored pencils are in these cups. So each one is differentiated into its own particular type of storage container, so it's easy to organize. And then, very, very, very important thing is when they are working at their tables, they are only allowed to take out one coloring or drawing material at a time. The rest remain inside the container. Guarda tu materiales. That way, when it's time for cleanup, they don't have this big spread of stuff all over the place, especially with markers. There's no caps on the markers. They're looking for caps everywhere. All they have to do is take that one item that they're using, place it back in the container. They're done. Now, when I'm using glue, similar to the paint, I have the same kind of squeeze bottles that I bought with a nice small tip that when they're pouring out the glue, they can just put those little dots, 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 dots around the edges of whatever they're gluing. So that way we don't make a big mess. They're also easy to unclog with a paper clip. And then when we're done, they go right back into the handy dandy basket. We're ready to go. Now, using paints, I have a different setup. So this is how I set up the paint station so that students can use the paint on their own, get their own paint, return the paint correctly, and clean up the area with the least amount of stress and the least amount of mess possible. So what they'll do, and I'll start over here on this end, and I have my tub full of brushes. I'll select a brush, come over to the second part of the station where I have my tub of all the scrap paper that I've been saving from all the assignments and papers that they're not using. So it's a little bit of a step towards recycling and being a green classroom because it doesn't just go straight into the garbage. Uh, but we will be using them as the palette. So I have them fold their paper into a size like this, place it inside one of these rectangular Tupperware tubs. That's going to serve as a palette. Put the brush inside, come over here. And I'm trying to get rid of all these uh, smaller containers, so I'm having them just pour the paint right out directly from the containers onto this piece of paper. So once the students have used the paper for the palettes, I can set them off to dry so we can use them again. You can also fold it over so now they have a clean area that they can use for painting and possibly color mixing if they're ready for that. Then when it's all used up and it's ready for its next life, I can just toss it in the trash. And all done. Snack is in the pile. And we're ready to go. Now, another thing I'll do also when I'm using my big jugs of tempera, like this, I'm going to want them to use them in a smaller format. So the first thing I do is I pour from the big jug into these smaller containers, which are kind of like condiment dispensers that you can buy off of Amazon. And I put them into these uh, squeezable tubes. And then I bought these smaller kind of squeeze tubes here. So that way I can just take the top off and I can pour that directly inside to fill these smaller containers up. And these are the containers that the students are going to use to dispense their paint. It has a very small tip. So it's easy to pour the paint out and not pour out too much. And it's easy to unclog with a paper clip. So I find this to be very helpful and useful for students so they can get their own paint. That way I am free to supervise and make sure things are getting cleaned up and put away properly and help assist them, of course, with their art making development. And then if you are going to need water, then I take these little solo cups and then we place them inside these circular tubs here. That way that will prevent the water from spilling. This also works the way I would do watercolor as well. When they have the brush, the brush can stay in the container, so it's easy to clean up when we're done. I do have a container where you can pour the used water into that container. So I'll just take the used paint water and pour it right inside this container here, so I can store that for later and just dump that into the toilet, not the sink actually, because it could get yelled at by the engineer. 
And then, with the brushes, you just put them right inside this container, which is full of some water. And they can just start soaking and getting all the paint off the brushes. And it really saves a lot of time on cleanup as well. And this is what my paint station looks like right now. Right down there, these are my aprons. Should be folded nicely. Got the aprons down there. Only use those with the primary students. Uh, then we get the brushes, get their tub, select the paint, and head back to their seats. They can go back to the paint station in the back, one, two, or three at a time, and they can get their paints. Everything is all set up for them to go. I can also stand in this location, and I can monitor the procedures, and I can even distribute the paint for them if they're not really ready to do it themselves yet. Okay, and then I have this table set up over here, it's a little bit of a mess, but this is where they can put all their paintings to dry. That way, it's a clear location for them to put their work, and then they can quickly go back to their seats and get ready for dismissal. And students are only going to be getting one color at a time, at least at the beginning when they're just learning how to use them, and they're going to follow this color sequence and get one at a time and work down the list from light to dark and warm to cool. Following this sequence of colors is really going to save a lot of time on um, color mixing disasters and a whole bunch of extra paint that's not being used and just little kids just mixing all the paint together to make one giant brown pile of goop. And so that way I can really control how they are using the colors, just do one at a time, and then slowly start to teach them how to do color mixing and creating those color values. So when it comes to the actual cleanup time, I'm going to only give my students 10 seconds to have their tables reset, everything picked up off the floor, all their materials put away, and all their art placed inside their folders. And so I do have this slide that I can use to help give the instructions, and sometimes it's very helpful to put in the timer. And that way they can see the time actually going down, and they have very little time to get their tables reset. Tables that are not reset, get up, and all right, you are not ready, so that means you're gonna get a strike, you may have to come in for recess and work on the cleaning up procedures and getting faster about that. I usually don't have to reinforce it. Just the threat alone usually gets everyone to work as quickly as possible. Now, sometimes I might need to give them a little bit more time than 10 seconds, but not a lot more time. And I will just count down from 10 and just kind of space out the numbers just a little bit just to make sure that I'm giving them enough fair time to get everything really cleaned up to the best of their ability, but I don't stretch it very long, and I definitely wouldn't give them more than like a minute, because then you're going to have all kinds of behavior issues happening, things are not going to be done efficiently, and what you want to train them to do is know where things go, and put them there quickly, and then just instantly be ready once it's time. So one other thing I would keep in mind, if you have items that you want the students to be picking up themselves, you can assign one student to be the material captain for a particular material. They can take the container that the materials should be stored in, they can go around, collect all the materials in here, and then place them on the location where they are supposed to be stored. And that way you only have one or two people, max, walking around the room cleaning up the tables. Otherwise, everything is being handled at their tables, put away in their materials, in their containers, at the tables that they're, that they're working on at the moment. And then to assist with students on putting their artwork away or any notes that we're taking, any of the papers that I need them to keep class to class to class, what I have is a purple folder for each one of the classes. This is going to contain all of the materials, all of the work from the students from one class. Inside this folder are the individual folders from each student. So each one is going to have their name, the room number, and the table that they sit at. So that way I can distribute these out to the different tables. It functions as my seating chart. No, that way they know where they're going to be sitting and then all of their work is inside the folder every single time So they have to worry about losing it as long as they're replacing them neatly and carefully at the end of class I'm going to be passing them out at the beginning of class So there should be like no no uh, papers coming up missing And so what they'll, what they'll do at the end of class during cleanup time is whatever they've been working on They're just going to take it and put it right inside the folder Have it neatly placed in front of them then when they're called, they take their folder themselves to the back of the room by the door where they're going to be lining up and they place it into a pile neatly. And I do have a folder captain assigned to make sure everyone's placing them correctly, all facing the same way in a neat pile so they don't get mixed up. And then that pile can then be collected 
and places their purple folder. And then I'm gonna take it over here and I'm gonna store it onto these shelves here where they're all located and I can find them easily. This is organized by day of the week. So as you can see, here's our Monday roll, our Tuesday roll, our Wednesday roll, and then they repeat, some of the classes repeat. So that's how I keep them organized. And just looking at the shelf, I can already see what the schedule is for the day and all their work is ready to go. So again, what I really want to emphasize is that every student has easy access to all the materials and easy access to where they need to put them away. That way, minimal time moving around, only one or two students only should be moving around the room. Everyone else is responsible for cleaning up at their tables. And again, everything is right there in front of them so they don't have to go anywhere. They don't have to do anything too drastic in order to clean up the room. And as I'm giving them pre-warning, like five minutes before cleanup, three minutes before cleanup, two minutes, one minute before cleanup, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, and cleanup time. You know, I'll do that level of gradation of timing if that student really, you know, that class really needs that extra prompting. Um, so yeah, like I said in the past, you used to have all kinds of problems with students not cleaning up on time. They would take forever, they wouldn't clean up, they keep working on their projects. I have them be late for class and some they would leave and there'd be a giant mess in the room. Now, because I've implemented these specific strategies that I just showed you, I have like zero problems with any students being ready in 10 seconds. So I hope that helps and hope you can get there in your own way too. Thank you.